I'd like to thank the Academy. How's that? Can anyone hear me? Louder? It's going to squeak. How's that? Pretty good, huh? Put in the yelling, that's for sure. Well, good morning. <laughs> Welcome to Frederick. Today, I'm looking at Color Lake and Baker Park in Frederick, Maryland. That's the center of the fishing universe today. So I thank everyone for coming here. It's a great occasion, something all of us here have worked hard for and look forward to. Um, I'm Andy Meckleberg. Despite the hat, I'm not Tom Brokaw, I'm not Michael Keaton, uh, but I thank them for helping us, uh, as well as Bob Clauser, and uh, I'm with the Friends of Lefty Cray and the Potomac Valley Fly Fishermen. Uh, I want to thank everyone here and everyone who got us here. It's been an amazing accomplishment, and there's so many people to thank. I will not name them all today, because we want to move on, but I want to give just a little bit of background to sort of tell you how we got to today. It all started in 2019, four years ago, uh, when I was talking to Dan Newland about how Lefty was honored in many other places, but not in his hometown of Frederick. So our original idea was, hey, let's name a boat ramp. Let's name a trail after him. That would have been easy. But, but no, after a year or so of the pandemic, you remember that? Yeah. Um, I was finally able to talk to someone in the county government who worked for Jan Gardner, a gentleman named Tim Goodfellow. Fellow. I don't know, Tim, if you're here, but... He really is a good fellow. He arranged for me to be able to talk to the Monocacy Scenic Commission about the concept. The commissioners were all supportive, and uh, now we had to come up with something. Um, so we got the gang together, um, and we sort of, you know, say, well, what are we going to do? We came up with this idea of a sculpture. And Dave Keene said, hey, let's put him in the water, maybe catching a fish. So, so that's what started us. We formed from that in our first big break was when uh, Wayne Ledbetter, some known as Doc, uh, ran into Senator Ron Young while walking his dog. Doc told him the concept and Senator Young immediately said he's supportive and will work with the state to get us funding. That was our spark to really get our act together. Uh, Dan Newland recommended Toby as our sculptor, which turned out to be the key decision for this whole project. Without Toby's artistry and community connections, we wouldn't be here today. He was able to get Michael Keaton and Tom Brokaw, who readily agreed, along with Bob Clouser, to be our national co-chairs. A big shout out to the Oshman Foundation. Marvin, I just met Marvin. Thank you so much. They gave us the first large grant, and that was the big start to really getting our momentum. So the next questions were, where do we put them? How do we get permission? And how are we going to do it? Uh, the answer came from Bob Smith with the city's Park and Recreation Department. Uh, he referred us to Peter Brame, who's with the Friends of Baker Park. We're in their park now. And after a number of discussions with them and a stroll around the park, uh, we were able to get agreement on the site. And probably just as importantly, uh, we met Sarah Coslow, who was on that stroll with the fr Friends of Baker Park. But she got so, so excited by the concept that first she said, I'm going to take up fly fishing. Second, she joined Potomac Valley Fly Fishers. Third, she joined Friends of Lefty Cray and has made an incredible contribution. So thank you, Sarah, for that. Uh, but it really shows the power of this sculpture to get people excited uh, about the concept. And to the answer to the last question of how we got it in, it was easy. Well, it was easy. I wasn't out there digging in it. Uh, <laughs> so I thanks to Morgan Tell Keller and their team uh, for really stepping up and installing them where you see them today. Uh, we've been fortunate to have received support from the state, arts foundations, community groups, many, many individuals and families. Last winter, we got a free booth at the fly fishing shows in Massachusetts, New Jersey, and Lancaster. And th thanks to Ben Ferensky and the fly fishing show, we had an opportunity to speak to literally thousands of fishers. And I think it's fair to say just about everyone knew him and had a story about a personal interaction with him. It was a truly amazing experience for all of us who were out there. This is why this organic effort to honor this hometown hero has achieved the success we have. Through this whole project, we've only received positive comments from everyone we've met. The reception by our city's elected leaders, business leaders, most of them have never gone fly fishing, never mind knowing about Lefty. They were very enthusiastic. I think the only controversial statement I heard was after Toby asked Michael Keaton to be one of our co-chairs, and he readily agreed, of course. Um, 
he asked, when am I going to build a sculpture of him? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'd like to, uh, I'll, I'll stop talking in a little bit. Um, I, I have to introduce the volunteers who met every two weeks via Zoom for almost three years in a labor of love. And please wave your hand or something. There's Heather Templeton, yeah. Don Fine, Ruby Fine, Wayne Ledbetter, Dennis Allen, Seth Denbo, Dave Keen, Dan Newland, Larry Fort, Troy Kitch, Corey Meckelberg, Sarah Coslow, and Steve Weinstein. So thank you all. There's so many people who have helped us along the way. There are a thousand instances where if someone hadn't helped or suggested something, this wouldn't have happened. Please excuse me if I overlooked mentioning your name. I apologize. You don't want me to speak too long. I know in your hearts you should feel proud of your contribution to this. Our efforts to honor and remember Lefty don't end today. We have already started to move ahead to establish Lefty's living legacy. The mission is to ensure that current and future generations know Lefty Cray and what he represents and appreciate the contributions he made to our sport, the outdoors, and society, providing a model for others to emulate. The real underlying mission is to instill the enjoyment of the outdoors and the need to be good stewards of our environment to our next generation, whether they fish or not. Now I'd like to turn over to our speakers, who will like to give us a context of how Lefty and this sculpture impacts our city, the state, his family, the many relatives who are here, the fishing community around the world, and then Toby will do the big reveal. So without further ado, I would like to introduce Mayor O'Connor. Good morning, everyone. Andy, thank you so much for that introduction and that. I, I, I'm not sure that I have words. Um, I, I have to make a confession. Uh, I'm one of those people that Andy spoke about. I'm, I'm not a fly fisherman. I'm, I'm not particularly fond of fishing. It doesn't, it, 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 it doesn't sound like something that would ever be fun to me. My father liked to fish. He, he tried to take me when I was little. I, I just didn't gravitate towards it. But it does remind me of something that my mother used to say, that it's okay that we don't all like the same things. And, and I think in the context of fly fishing, if we did all love to fly fish, um, a lot of us would be unhappy because we wouldn't be able to find the supplies that we needed and all of the best fishing spots would be gone. So I, I think it's okay, but I will tell you what I am uh, a fan of and what I do really like is community. And what this project has represented is a call to community and people coming together. When Andy talks about everyone that he's spoken with and the response that he's gotten and everyone who has done what they need to do, that is the heart of Frederick. That is what we are proud of as a community. And so I want to thank all of you folks. See what I did there? See what I did there? Friends of Lefty Cray. I want to thank all of you um, who helped to make this statue possible and, and this honor. I want to thank Lefty's family uh, for being here to help share the legacy of Lefty Cray. Uh, I want to thank the, the, the people who gave money. I want to thank our Parks and Recreation Department that worked to make this a reality. It is everyone coming together that makes Frederick uh, the wonderful place that it is. I want to thank Toby Mendez. We are so fortunate to have in our midst another local resident um, who is making international fame. And for us to be able to have your work displayed in our community is truly an honor for us because what that means to Frederick is that it adds to why this is such a wonderful destination for so many people. Uh, the millions of dollars a year that are generated in tourism uh, will only be enhanced by now another community of people, fishermen from around the world, who will come to Frederick to see this beautiful sculpture. And so, uh, as the mayor of the city of Frederick, um, no, I'm not Michael Keaton or Tom Brokaw. Pittsburgh is uh, where Michael Keaton is from. They can put a statue of Michael Keaton in Pittsburgh. I'm, I'm, I'm sure they will. We don't need to do that here. Um, uh, but we are proud that uh, we are the home to Lefty Cray and that we can be a place that recognizes his contributions to recreation, 
to the environment um, and to build our continuing cultural identity in the city of Frederick. So thank you all very much for being here. Uh, they were a little worried that the rain uh, might keep some of the crowd down. I'm now a little nervous that maybe it's good that it did rain because if it didn't, maybe we wouldn't be able to hold all the people who would be in the park today. So uh, thank you all very much. It's an honor to be here and to share this moment with all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. And I, I think as a sign, the, the rain seems to be uh, ebbing a little, so I think that's a good sign. So next I'd like to introduce uh, former Senator Ron Young, who I uh, said was extremely instrumental at the beginning of this. Well, I heard Michael say, uh, former Mayor Ron Young, that's the best title I ever held. Um, I'll just say thank you all. The last two have done a great job of it, and uh, what Michael said about the community is what let us bring Frederick back and what makes it great. Um, Lefty once taught a one-armed guy how to fly fish, and the guy was really thrilled because the first one he caught was this big. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Some, uh, you know, uh, a lot of things seem to converge. I was walking my dogs in the rain this morning and uh, ran into Wayne. And it made reminded me that I was walking my dogs when I ran into Wayne and he asked me if I could get some money from the state. And I told him I was pretty sure I could get $50,000, which we managed to do. So, uh, and, and on the idea of convergence, not too long ago I was up in Boston, uh, wasn't the first time in Boston, but it was the first time I went over to the baseball stadium and saw the four uh, Red Sox there, uh, led by Ted Williams, that Toby did. And uh, Ted Williams had a lot of nicknames and things he was known for, but he was also known as the greatest fly fisherman that ever played baseball. <laughs> and he was a great fly fisherman. He took everything he did seriously, and he was a very serious fly fisherman. And so I, I think of Toby again, and he's doing, if not the greatest, one of the greatest fly fishermen, but certainly the greatest promoter of fly fishing that ever lived. And he's from right here in our community, and it's uh, great to see very shortly uh, what he looks like out there. I was a newspaper boy, started when I was 12, and I used to hang around the YMCA, <clears throat> and Lefty came in there occasionally. And, you know, when you're 12, 13 years old, anybody that's got notoriety is like, wow. And I thought, saw Lefty Cray and I knew he wrote in the paper, and I thought, wow, I met a famous guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, wasn't quite true then, but it became true. And uh, it was a thrill, and I, I, I met him, and I can't say I knew him well, but uh, I, I met him a few times, saw him at the Y a few times, and I read my first sports column because I had met him. And then he went on to write internationally, and uh, it's really uh, fantastic to have him here today. And Convergence uh, got to know Toby quite a while ago. Not only is he a great sculptor, he's a great guy. And he makes a lot of these things happen. And he's really talented, and uh, he's a lot younger than I am, so I'm not sure <laughs> If I'll live to see the day we put a sculpture up of uh, our great sculpture from Frederick. <laughs> so when he doesn't have another job on the way, he should start making his. So when the time comes. <laughs> so uh, anyhow, just uh, thank you all again. And it was a pleasure for me uh, to be involved and I'll keep walking my dogs, and who knows what else will happen. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now uh, we'd like to hear from the family. 
from uh, Lefty's brother, Michael, okay. and or Vicky, whichever, however you guys want to speak. Come on up. Come on. <laughs> this is your chance. Come on. <laughs> okay, guys, you ready for this? Thank you. All right. I want to tell you something. And this is the truth. I got a, I got a letter. I got a letter here that I found in my, God knows where, in my house, and it's dated 2011, October 1st. And I figured this would really be good to say this right now because before I start my speech, I want my dad to have his speech. This just to letter, this letter is to sort of verify that this is my desire. I definitely expect to be back in the United States October the 14th. But I want to be sure my two loved children are not burdened with such. Because re reason why, he was going to the Amazon and he wanted to make sure that he would get back in time. And said, you know, but I thought it was really appropriate because of the date. So, faith. All right, now I'm ready. <laughs> okay. All right. Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming here today to share in honoring my father, Bernard Dr. Cray. Born 1925 here in Frederick County, where his family has existed for centuries. My dad always told me to make a joke when addressing a group of people. It makes him relax. Unfortunately, I don't have his photographic memory on jokes. I never remember the punchline. I don't. I mean, <laughs> as many of you know, my father had a humble background. My dad's own father passed away when he was just seven. His mother, Helen, was, was, was left with four children and had no place to go. People came together in Frederick where they found a home for them and slowly help came. He told me that joining the Boy Scouts saved his life. When Christmas arrived, they made sure that every child had a present. When he got older, he learned new ways to bring in memory and money, sorry, and money to survive, survive. Growing up, he would hold three jobs to support us while my mother tended to the home. My, on one job, a basketball coach for St. John's High, he was also a game warden through his main job, though his main job was a lab technician at the Biological Warfare in Fort Detrick. On these days off, very well, I almost killed it. <laughs> well, that's a joke, right? I did it. Okay. Keep the paper down here. No, put the paper down here. Got it. I did. Okay, sorry. On these days off, he would teach casting and fishing rod, fishing, uh, at his the same, the same lake, in his lab, I'm leaving that reading this without glasses, you know. So I'm doing okay. All right. In his lab, Matthew Craig was the only one to survive an outbreak of anthrax. A strain has been has been named after him, the BVK, Bernard Victor Craig. My dad fought in World War II, where he joined the 69th Division in the Battle of the Bulge. On the stories, oh, the stories he would tell me. He was a tough old guy. But kind, loving man, he knew no strangers, only friends. Fishing became his focus and started as a child. He fed his family and learned the art and trades to support his wife and two children. Me, one of them, <laughs> and my brother. There wasn't a risk he didn't take, that he didn't succeed and work hard daily all his life to become who he was. He helped many in his, in his travels throughout, gave them hope when they might not have had. My father perfected a better way to cast a rod to help the fishermen. He decided the best way to show to show them was to teach them. And hey, that was cold here, you know. <laughs> anyway, and Dad, he did. Sometimes he was blunt in his teaching. He told them when he felt. He did. Lapsy began writing books about fishing and hunting. He loved he loved photography in a way I've never seen. My dad once took a flower. The Dutchman's britches, britches, britches. While my bee was gathering pollen, he cut it in half, cut the flower in half, and that was a remarkable photo because he got a picture of the bee and the flower all eating on it. It's so cool. 
Um, okay. He wrote for magazines and many newspapers on the East Coast on a regular basis. In Miami, Florida, Lapke became a director of the world-renowned fishing tournament. My father had a loved life. He loved my mother with every ounce of love he had in him. He loved his children, his grandchildren, and his great-grandchildren, and brother Dick, Ted, Michael, and sister Eileen. My dad loved his family. He really did. He traveled the world so many times, it's hard to count them all. Matthew fished places that were challenging, hold on, were challenging but exciting to him. From Argentina to Canada to Europe and Australia, my father was in four plane crashes, accepted by the Aborigines and fished with the natives in New Guinea. The Amazon was his favorite place to fish, but when home, he returned to the Potomac River. My dad started his career in a small canning closet. Really was a bathroom. <laughs> he bought a ten dollar royal typewriter and a cheap camera at a pawn shop. Years later he upgraded to a high class Mac computer. Cameras lined the closet. His fishing gear was a whole basement. My mother was oh <laughs> You're gonna take over every darn room <laughs> And his fly fishing area had its own room. <coughs> My father was a perfectionist and the most organized individual I've ever witnessed. His laugh was memorable and he was full of life. He was full of life. Dad could remember jokes he heard 50 years ago, and to this day, his echoes are in my mind. My father never lost sight of himself. He was the kindest person I know, always giving the best advice. In 2018, my dad told me, Vic, I have no enemies. I see people for what they are, not who they are. Now I wish to thank a few people that need thanking. Oh, I'm Mr. Page. I'm still making jokes, right? Okay. Okay. The people who donated to this project and the Friends of Lafayette Cray Committee. The sponsor is Tom Brokaw. Because of his illness, he cannot make it today. Actor Michael Keaton, who is doing a filming over at UK, and a renowned fisherman, Bob Clouser. Bob was unable to be here, but only he wanted to come. I wish to thank the city of Frederick. I don't know where you are. Mayor. <laughs> mayor. 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 Back there. Back there. Thanks, Mayor. <laughs> city of Frederick for their admiration for retaining local history. Dennis Allen and his crew on the father's, my father's proj library project. Scott Grove and especially Toby Mendez for creating such a wonderful statue of my father. I ain't done yet. I know there were times I must have driven Toby crazy trying to get my father's features right. Right? <laughs> See? <laughs> it's mostly his stomach. <laughs> and his arm, and his chin. <laughs> yeah, he had a big one, you know. <laughs> All that ham and stuff. Okay, there were times I'm like, okay. Lisa Gregory, sorry, I'm sorry, next late. Lisa Gregory for her wonderful article about my father in Frederick Magazine. And last but not least, Sarah Cosco for arranging the party last night. On behalf of myself and my brother Larry, my children, Matthew, H Matthew, Hillary, and Samantha, my nephew Larry Jr., and our family of Crays and Bumgarners, I thank you for honoring this wonderful, amazing man, my father, Bernard Lapte Cray. <laughs> How they do? And now a rebuttal from his brother. <laughs> Thank you for the honor of being able to be here today. Uh, my talk is going to be like a mini skirt. It's going to be short enough to keep your attention, but long enough to cover what's important. <laughs> when my mom had her first child, she did not know what to name him. So she named him after the doctor that delivered him, Bernard Thomas. 22 years later, I came along, and um, even though there was this age difference, uh, Leslie and I were very close, and he would call me after almost every trip. He saw life through a lens of humor. Uh, he never talked about the fish, but just all the funny stuff that happened. Uh, when you think of Lefty Cray, probably one of the first things that comes to your mind is casting. Uh, he says... He told me that no one really taught him how to fly cast, but he developed his own style. 
which was basically how to get the most line out with the least effort. And uh, in 1965, he wrote an article for Field and Stream magazine uh, on this new method, and it, to, to, it would be understated to say it created an outrage. Uh, there was such intense resentment because his method was flying in the face of hundreds of years of way, the way that fly casting was taught, which was basically the clock method. But yet, everyone today who is going to learn how to fly cast knows the importance of keeping your elbow level, don't bend your wrist, keep your loops tight and how to get more distance with the double haul. So <clears throat> there's a, a, even though people don't, may not be aware of him, there's a great legacy that he has left. One of the reasons he was able to develop this style is he had incredible hand-eye coordination. When he was a gun representative with the Remington Gun Company, he would do exhibitions of shooting aspirin tablets with a BB gun. He would consistently be able to <clears throat> cast a fly 80 feet into a teacup. Uh, when he first started, he would put rods in both hands and have two girls stand down <clears throat> about 40, 50 feet away holding bananas, and he would slice them in equal parts <laughs> all the way down to their fingers. But soon he actually grew tired of what he called hot dogging or showboating and he found his true uh, passion which was that of teaching as he would always say knowledge is not to impress but to instruct and so when you consider all of the hundreds of thousands and thousands of articles that he has written uh, over 30 books he is no doubt the most read angler uh, alive. Um, my dad uh, helped build the Frederick High School. We went to visit it last night, but it was gone. Uh, I've been away a while. And uh, one of the things that they wanted to do to honor my dad for his contribution to the fly fishing community was uh, to have him lay the cornerstone of the high school. So after the foundation was laid, they had him lay, had a little ceremony like this where he, he laid the cornerstone. And I think it's very interesting because we're almost, can almost see where the old high school used to be. But today we're honoring someone because of their contribution has made a, uh, laid a foundation uh, that is going to be permanent. The foundation determines the integrity of the building and most foundations are covered up. You never see the foundation. But that's one of the reasons why today I think is so important is because all the people that are involved are here to honor and to keep alive the memory of my brother Lefty Craig. So on behalf of him and our family, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you Michael. And um, we're honored to have uh, uh, Andy and Lily Renzetti who came up from Florida. Sorry about the weather. Um, uh, they're with the uh, Renzetti Vice Company and uh, Lily have asked to speak to we'll talk about from the fly fishing community side. Come on up. Good morning, everyone. I want to thank you for being here today, and I also want to thank the committee for asking me to speak. Um, it is truly an honor and a humble experience uh, to be here and, and speak on this occasion. I would really would like to express my gratitude to the committee for their commitment, their due diligence, and their vision to honor Lefty. While I believe Lefty will not have liked all this fuss, I do believe it is important and necessary that this happen and that we honor him in this beautiful environment, even though it's raining today, but I'm sure it's beautiful, in a place where every angler, but every citizen of the world can come 
and know about his legacy and the contribution that he made to the fly fishing industry. He was the best ambassador of the sport, and this is the perfect setting for people to know about it and be inspired. His mission was to teach, and that's what this statue will do. He will teach about the community, but he will also teach about a humble man with humble beginning that really changed our industry. When I speak today, I speak on my behalf as well as behalf of my husband, Andy Renzetti, who is really the reason why I made Lefty, how I, why I started a friendship with Lefty. Andy and Lefty met 50 years ago at a fly shop in Pennsylvania. They met, they talk about the vice, and if you know Lefty, you knew that if you show any interest in fly fishing, he will follow up with a note, a written on his old typewriter letter to you. So yes, Andy got the letter months later, and the friendship started. It was truly, uh, honestly, a beautiful friendship of two men that have so much respect and admiration for each other. To Andy, Lefty was his mentor. He was professionally, but as well in character. Nowadays, I think that the reason why Andy took me to Lefty's house for a casting lesson was to get his approval before marrying me. <laughs> I honestly believe that today. Our conversation with Lefty since we met him has been in our dining room, our living room, and our office. They were personal. They were about families. They were about each other and the industry that we love. I recall our conversation about his beginning in Miami and fishing in faraway places. It was always exciting. But what I also remember is when he spoke about his the loss of love of his life, F. You will see that when he talk about her, he will come down, he will get a sparkle on his eye, and he will smile and tell stories. Truly an inspiring st a love story. And yes, he will always end as a, with a joke before telling me, I love you, kiddo. Our conversation was about this sport that we love so much, about his desire and his initiative of making this a sport for all, regardless of your background. And yes, left this influence are beyond his teaching and his conservation efforts. He really shaped the industry. So for that, I, as a person in the industry, industry as, as an angler, will be forever grateful. He was the biggest advocate to include women in this sport. One of his prodigy is Captain Sarah Gardner. He recognized her talent, but he also recognized her commitment, her passion. He mentored her to be better than what she was. He gave her the confidence that she was an amazing angler and even a better angler than a lot of men around her. She also, he also realized that she was one in a very male-dominated industry, and she gave her all that confidence. He honestly changed her life the same way that he changed many anglers life. I believe he will be delighted to see the number of female anglers in the industry and will be the first one to score anyone that will undermine our contribution to the sport. Lefty will advise them, the ladies, to stay committed, to, know, to learn as much as they can, to know their worth, to also know what they bring in the industry, not to cut themselves short, and but at the same time, not to be too greedy, to follow the passion. And that is the same advice he will give 
to anyone. It wasn't just female. I hope that today, anglers from around the world get inspired by this act of beauty that you have done and commit themselves to honor those that have dedicated their career to promote fly fishing and to grow this sport by their teaching or their conservation efforts. I would like to thank Toby for capturing the essence of Lefty, a remarkable man that changed our life, and all of you for being here today. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Lily. Uh, what I said about the rain earlier, never mind. Uh, <laughs> so last but certainly not least, uh, I'd like to introduce uh, artist extraordinaire, Antonio Toby Mendez. Yes. Toby. Thank you. I have a long speech to give. <laughs> it's, it's funny, uh, somebody was asking me um, the other night, um, you know, when you do your research, how do you get started? And uh, one of the things, let's see. Wow. Can't stand too close, huh? Uh, can everybody hear me okay? Okay. Um, and uh, I mentioned I, I went on YouTube and started watching a workshop that Lefty was giving. And the subject was knot tying. I thought, oh my God, <laughs> knot tying. But he made it so compelling. And I was like, wow. And I, I watched the whole thing. It was probably well over an hour. And I thought, you know, I have to start teaching at Hood this fall. This was a year ago. And I thought, I got to step it up. I mean, if he can make it compelling to tie a knot and that I can remember, <laughs> I could actually remember how to tie a surgeon's knot and how to make it more effective. You got to keep those loops even and equal t tension. And you've got to put uh, lubrication on them. Uh, because the friction will break the knot uh, when it becomes tight. I thought, wow, uh, what an incredible man. And then I, um, um, a actually, I want to thank uh, Dan Newland, who recommended me to the Friends of Lefty Cray. Uh, he reached out to me, and um, obviously, like many people, I didn't know who Lefty was, and he sent me a photo. And it actually is the photo that I based the sculpture on. Uh, it just lent itself to being a good sculpture. And I took that photo up to Philadelphia to the foundry that I'm using and showed the owner, uh, Jeb, just the photo. Didn't tell him who it was. And he looked at it and he said, that's Lefty Cray. I have all his books. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> and we, we started talking about it. And I said, well, you know, the, the fishing rod needs to be made out of stainless. He said, well, I have a blacksmith that we work with and he's a fly fisherman. And he's going to get it right. And it's like, and he knows who Lefty is. And it's like, oh my gosh. And this happened over and over again. And and I was thinking about it today. Is is that, um, you know, it's ridiculous to be a sculptor and to want to become known, but to be a fly fisher and to become internationally known, and to have Tom Brokaw and Michael Keaton not skip a beat to say they would like to come on board, just blew my mind. Uh, Anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read my speech here. Um, some of it is redundant, but I'll be quick. I said I'd like to thank, to take a moment to thank more than a few people that were instrumental in making all of this happen. First off, I'd like to thank the Friends of Lefty Cray. They're such a great group to work with and a wonderful, with a wonderful mission. Their goal is to make more people aware of the sport of fly fishing and thereby to enjoy the outdoors and to conserve nature. One of the most influential fly fishers in Frederick's own is Lefty Cray, who grew up not far from here, over on Ben Street, and over 50 years ago actually taught some clinics right here, right at Color Lake. He also graduated from Frederick High School and is part of their Hall of Fame. And this humble guy went on and became internationally known, and it's really, it is mind-boggling. The future mission of the Friends of Lefty Cray is to spread the interest in the sport, and part of that is teaching fishing to children. You know, the other day, after we finished installing the sculpture of Lefty, there was a moment when everybody had left, and, and just after I finished loading up my tools and sat down, actually right on the bench, it's right here. Um, I sat down on the bench, and a father and his son arrived at the edge of the Color Lake and brought their rods, and both of them cast their lines 
and they did this on either side of Lefty. Huh. It was almost like it was staged. Anyway, I'd like to thank Morgan Keller for installing the foundation for the sculpture. That was quite a task. Uh, they were chest deep for almost two days in this water. I would also like to thank the city of Frederick, led by the mayor and the board of aldermen, for giving their strong support and the staff from the city for helping bring this to fruition, assisting us in this effort. I want to thank Independent Casting Foundry for their incredible work in casting the sculpture. I'd also like to thank Scott Grove for doing a wonderful job on the wayside display. Finally, I would like to thank Senator Ron Young, who got the ball rolling by sponsoring the bond bill, along with the state of Maryland. We had some wonderful support from granting organizations um, I mentioned the, uh, the first one I'm mentioning is the Osherman Foundation. You know, before I even had the contract, I reached out to, um, to the Osherman Foundation, and, and Marvin sent word back. This is before I had a contract that they would give strong support for this project, and, and they stood up. And the second uh, foundation was the Delaplane Foundation, and then the Maryland State Arts Council gave us a public art grant, and it's my hope that it will make people take, I'm sorry, with the sculpture, it's my hope that people will take a pause and learn about Lefty and hopefully smile when they see Lefty doing what he did best. You know, Dan Newland mentioned this project. Um, we came and looked at the site. This was our first choice of site. And, and he said, we should put it in the water. And I started laughing because I knew that people are going to come around this corner and be surprised by it. And, and they're going to think that's ridiculous that they put them in the water and how perfect. And I think the surprise is going to be something that they're not going to forget. And with the Wayside exhibit, you know, part of public art is to educate people. And they're going to learn about Lefty. And with the QR code, they're going to even learn even more about Lefty. Anyway, thank you, uh, Friends of Lefty Craig. You made this fun, and I hope it brings quality of life to Frederick. It certainly has brought quality of life to mine. That said... Vicki, you ready to go out there and pull the veil? Wow. <laughs> and along with uh, your family. No more, uh, no more Phantom Menace. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of people like Lefty. You want to do one, man? Let's just do it.